All right, everybody. Hey, this is Caroline from So Can She. And this time we have technology working on our side. I'm so excited. And um, this is week five in our color by number quilt along. I've got my color by number quilt here, and I'm so excited to show you how to quilt a little block design today that I just love. I think the spiral square design is, it looks so tricky and it's so beautiful. It's beautiful in lots of different blocks, lots of different places. Um, and today it's just perfect. We have a four and a half inch square that we're going to put it in and I'm going to show you how to do it first without rulers. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it using a quilting ruler. Now, to tell you the truth, my favorite way to quilt this design is with a quilting ruler. And that's because it's easier to keep my line straight and it's easier to measure the distance between the corner of one square and the corner of the square inside it. And you'll see. Let me make sure we don't have any, no questions yet. No, I will read the questions at the end, but I want to make sure nobody was screaming at me that I was upside down or something crazy like that. <laughs> Looks like I'm not, thank goodness. So let's just get on with it. I have set up my little Bernina 770 here with some lighter colored thread here because I want you to be able to see really well in this pink block what I am doing. But of course, when you do this, I encourage you to just use matching thread because then when you make mistakes and we all make mistakes, then when you make mistakes, they aren't going to show, at least not as much. And I hope that I'm going to give some of you confidence to try this because you're going to see me mess up and you're gonna see me just keep going, even in thread that stands out. Um, I really hope that that's one thing that I am sharing with you through this little series is that we all make mistakes and when you're quilting, you're not giving your quilt to the quilt police. You're going to give it to somebody who loves you and they are, they're not even going to know you messed up and they're not going to see your mistakes. So, because everyone makes mistakes. So anyway, okay, I'm going to put on my little gloves here. And I'm going to do my best to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to work in this little block right here. Now, this square spiral design is one that mystified me for so long. And I practiced it and practiced it and messed up and messed up. And then when I finally got it, when, it, the, when the logic of it finally clicked in my brain, then all of a sudden this is like the easiest block in the world to do, the easiest design in the world to do. So... If at first this doesn't come natural to you, I totally recommend that you make a practice quilt sandwich and draw out a grid on it, preferably a four and a half inch grid like this, and just practice this size design until it comes easy to you. Because now the logic of it comes easy to me, uh, but it didn't at first, it took a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start right here in the lower right hand corner. And that's just because this is how my brain kind of caught on to it. Really, you can start in any corner. So I dropped my needle down and I'm pulling out the bobbin thread here. And then I'm going to sew just a few stitches here to secure. And I'll come back later and cut these threads. As I mentioned before, if you're sewing show quilt, you'll want to come bury your threads, but I just clip mine. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this square spiral, I start in a corner, but from now on, I'm not going to aim my, the sides of my square spiral to end in a corner. They are always going to end the same distance from the adjacent corners. So my next one, the distance that I picked for this, and it works out really beautifully in this block, it makes us end up with a little equilateral triangle in the middle, so it's perfect. We're going to aim to end three quarters of an inch away from the corner that we're heading at. So if I was heading to this corner over here, which that would work, my, I would just be working my spiral here in a clockwise direction. I would aim to draw a straight line from this corner to three quarters of an inch away from this corner up here. But I'm going to go in a counterclockwise direction because that, that just, that's why my brain works. My brain goes counterclockwise. So I'm going to go so here's my 
adjacent corner and I'm going to aim to make my straight line end three quarters of an inch away from that corner. And right now, because of the way my quilt is situated, I don't have a clear view of that. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit so I have a clear view of this spot right here that is three quarters of an inch away. And here I go, I'm just gonna sew as straight as I can, but I'm not using a ruler here, ladies. So it's probably not gonna be very straight. So let's go. Okay, there, I did it. I surprised myself even. Okay, so now from here, here's my adjacent corner going in counterclockwise direction. I'm gonna go down from there, three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna aim to go from here over to here, three quarters of an inch down. I'm going to just look where I'm going and try and sew a straight line from here to here. Not bad, wow, I'm seriously impressed with myself. When I was practicing this without rulers, I was not doing so hot. So I'm just cutting my threads here. And, okay, so my next adjacent corner is here. Three quarters of an inch away is about right here. So let's go. Okay. I hope this is good angle for you guys. Now the next adjacent corner is over here. I'm going to turn my quilt a little bit. You notice I don't have to turn my quilt as long as I can see where I'm going. I don't have to turn my quilt that much because we're free motion quilting here. So I want to aim for this corner right here and three quarters of an inch up. Now this time, I wanna make sure you can see this. This time I'm headed toward the corner where I started. This is the corner where I started. So I'm just aiming for three quarter inches up on my first quilting line. So let's go to there. And I'll stop right on the line. Now I'm going to, normally I don't twist my quilt around this much, but I just wanna make sure you see. Now here's my line. All right, so here's my line, the first line that I made, and I'll go to this corner, but I'll count three quarters of an inch over. I'm gonna go as straight as I can. Okay, continue in a counterclockwise direction. Here's the next corner three quarter inches down. Okay, here's my next quarter, three or quarter inches over. Now I'm just gonna keep continuing this pattern. Sewing as straight as I can, and also trying to make my three quarters of an inch the same every time. That's not so easy to do. But let me tell you, when you're done, even if your lines are wobbly, even if your measurements are not exact, this ends up being a beautiful design. Now when I get to the point where it looks like I'm going to be able to finish with a nice equilateral triangle, which this isn't gonna be perfect, but this is where I wanna finish. Instead of quilting to a place three quarter inches away from the line, which would be about right here, I'm just gonna to go to the corner to make that triangle. And there we go. I made a little triangle in the middle to finish. And do a little bit of stitching right on the top of it. And I'll raise my needle, raise my foot. With my right hand, I'm pulling out some thread. Then I'm just gonna drop my needle again and pull it up raise the foot and with my right hand I'm pulling out some thread. I'll pull those at the same time. It's kind of hard because I lost the grip. But I pull it out until I see, and it's hard right in here because the bobbin thread is the same color as my top thread, but I pull it, some bobbin thread up, and then I cut. So I've got a perfectly all trimmed up little block. So there it is. There is the block that does not have rulers. I did it all freehand. No, the lines aren't perfectly straight, but they do look, it looks hand-drawn. I love it. Hand-drawn is one of my favorite art forms. So I still like this. 
But now I'm going to show you how I do it with just one straight edge quilting ruler. And you will see that um, my lines are straighter and I can use the quilting ruler to measure. Now, I hope you notice this is a block that we have to stop and start every time because it starts at the corner and then we end in the middle and we have to break threads right there in the middle. So that is one of the unfortunate things about this design, but I still think it's beautiful and easy, so I still do it. Okay, so there, I start it again. I see a whole bunch of comments and questions. I will get to those at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same straight edge ruler that I've been using all this time. I'm going to use the straight side of it, not the curved. And let's just turn this and make sure you can see. So I'm going to do the same design here. Now, one thing that we talked about already with this ruler is that the lines on this ruler are quarter inch apart, all of these three lines, plus the needle is going to be a quarter inch away from this edge. So there's three lines here and they, this fourth line right here is an inch away from you'll be quilting an inch away from this line right here. So if I want my lines, if I'm measuring by three quarter inch away from each corner, that means I'm going to put the corner on the second line here. And if I put the corner on the second line, then it's a half inch to the edge and another quarter inch to my needle and I will be measured exactly. So the ruler helps me measure as well as help me quilt straight. So I am placing this second line on my ruler here right on the corner of the block and then I'll quilt this straight line over to here and I will have quilted my quilting will end up a quarter inch away from the corner if I have done it correctly so let's see if I can there we go not bad so now I just turn my ruler I still have my ruler here against the ruler foot and over here I put this line the second line right on the corner of the block so that as I quilt this straight line right here my, I'm going to stop three quarter inches away from the edge from the corner and I'll pull some quilts up here so that it's pulled and it doesn't get stuck on the edge of my table and there we go. Work my way around, keeping that second line on my square's corner. And here we go. I'm going to thread since I'm close by. I think maybe one of the things that messed me up about this design is I assumed that I, my squares and my spiral squares would always be a perfect square. You've got a perfect square with your first four sides. Look, I've got a perfect square, but starting here, I'm going to still follow the same pattern. I'm going to put my quarter inch line or three quarter inch line right on the corner of this new square that I just made. But from here on out, my designs, the form that I'm making inside here is no longer going to be a perfect square. And once I realized that that was the case, this wasn't quite so mystifying to me anymore or so frustrating. So here we go. All right, so this is the new corner right here. I'm going to put the three quarter inch line on the corner. Here I'm going to come to the end of my second square in a square, but you'll see it's not such a perfect square anymore. Definitely got some wonky angles here going on. But now that I expect it, I'm just going to keep going. And you see how using a ruler, it doesn't necessarily make me faster, but it just does the measuring in the straight lines for me, which is what rulers do. 
And also, I hope you're noticing that I'm really not twisting the quilt around a lot. When I do twist the quilt around, it's either because I can't see where I'm going or I want to make sure you can see where I'm going. And really, when you're doing this yourself, it's really only important to make sure you can see where you're going. If you can see where you're quilting to, where you're ending up, then you don't need to twist your quilt around. So here I'm just keep going around. Got a really wonky looking shape in there now. And I think I've almost reached the place where I can make an equilateral triangle. Or pretty close. So now I'm just going to try to end up right there. There we go. There is my next one. Okay, since we went so fast today, I am just going to do one more. Put my thread out, needle down, needle up, put up, pull my thread out, pull it till I can see the bottom thread, flip, and I'm just gonna do one more since we went so fast today. And then I will go ahead and see what the questions are. Oh, let's we'll just go in this comments. Pulling up some bobbin thread. One of the questions that I get most often is what kind of thread I use. Um, I use all kinds of high quality thread. If something is not working in my machine, then I'll give it away. But for the most part, I love Orphil. I love Glide. Um, I love a lot of threads from Superior Threads. First one. And another question I get a lot is what kind of needles I use. Um, I have found that the titanium top stitch needles from Superior are really great all-purpose needles for quilting and for sewing bags and for embroidery. So I keep those in my machine almost all the time unless I'm working on some knit fabric. And if I'm working on knit fabric, then of course I'll use a ball point needle. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that my stitches are not completely even. But my, when I do get a nice even stitch, this is how I, why and how. I have set my machine on about three quarters speed. So, I know how fast the needle is going to move when I mash the pedal down. So then I just mash the pedal down every time and my speed, my machine speed is consistent. And then I only have to think about having my hands push the quilt and at a consistent speed. Because I'm no longer trying to control the speed of the needle plus the speed of the quilt. I'm comfortable with my needle going at three-quarter speed. So then I just get accustomed to just always pedal to the metal. So it goes three-quarter speed, and then I'm just trying to move my quilt at a consistent speed. And I'm not saying it's perfect. That's just what works for me. And look, I'm almost there. I think I can make this little equilateral triangle. Or pretty close. I love it. Okay, I'm get these stitches close together. And use the needle and the foot. Pull out a little bit of thread. Needle down, needle up, foot up. 
pull on these until I can see my bobbin thread. Just cut. And there we go. Wow, I've already done three right here in front of you. And to tell you the truth, I only have two more left and then I have finished this block this week. This is, okay, hopefully I can get this. I need to invest in some better equipment, don't I? <laughs> okay, so hopefully that you saw how fast and easy this one is. I was practicing before I got on here today and I did probably six blocks practicing and then I just did three more in front of you. So this is a super easy, super fun block. If you have any concerns about it all or if it's the first time you've tried it, I just recommend that you go ahead and practice it on a practice quilt sandwich. Just make a quilt sandwich, Preferably your grid is going to be four and a half inches apart, so it's just like this quilt, and then you can practice it and have it perfect for when you're putting it on your quilt. As you remember, with our quilt uh, by number quilt, we have 14 different fabrics in our quilt, and each fabric is 12 different four and a half inch squares. So you will have an opportunity to practice this design 12 times in one. So pick one fabric. This, I think, is my fabric number three. And I will have quilted this 12 times in the fabric number three squares when I'm done, which is gonna to be today because I'm almost done. I have two left. So let me move this a tiny bit so I can go look at my computer. It's like this um, tripod on a crane type thing. I mean, it works to show you, but let's see here. Let's see here. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Mary. Hi, Katie. Hi, Anne. Another Anne. Hi, Lillian, John, Laura, Nancy, Elmira. Nancy says, do you have to have a special foot when you use the Westerly rulers? So Westerly sells um, walking feet and they are very affordably priced. So if you don't have one yet, I will uh, put a link in the comments. There is this PDF document that Westerly has provided that lists almost every single sewing machine and then it lists the walking foot that goes on that sewing machine. Uh, and they have like four different walking feet. They have low shank, medium shank, high shank, high shank special. And then there is, and then if you have a long arm, which I do have a sit down long arm, you can see her back there behind me with the cover on her. Um, if you have a long arm, it's there's also a long arm size quilting ruler, usually you buy that from the company that sold you your long arm. And then there are four, also four different levels of rulers. So you have to make sure that not only do you buy the right quilting or ruler foot, that you also get the rulers that will go with that ruler foot. Because as we talked about before, you have to be able to move your ruler all the way around the ruler foot. And if the ruler is too thick for your ruler foot, then it won't move all the way around behind it. And if the ruler is too thin, then as the ruler foot bounces, it can hop on top of the ruler and break your sewing machine. You'll, you'll be lucky if you only break your needle, you can break your sewing machine. So it's very important. Now, a lot of, since ruler quilting is getting to be so popular, a lot of sewing machine companies are making uh, sewing machine ruler feet to go with their machine. So you can also um, look for one that is specially made for your machine. Uh, so when I did ruler foot quilting on my Janome, I used the one that was provided to me by Westerly. But now that I'm doing this on my Bernina, it's Bernina foot number 72. And it is an adjustable walking foot, which I really like. Not walking foot, I'm sorry. It's an adjustable ruler foot. And I really like it because I can move this little dial here and it will adjust to the thickness of my quilt. And that just helps make prettier stitches. So. I really like the Bernina one, but there are. So either I would first check with the manufacturer of your sewing machine, and then if they don't make one, the Westerly foot should work great too. Really, the, the rulers work with any, pretty much, I don't want to say any, but the ruler feet are generally made to work with any ruler because what you really need is you just need a foot that has that tall lip around it that will go up right next to the ruler and it won't hop on top of it or slip underneath it. They're made, made to it like works together right next to each other. Okay, hope that made sense. Next question. So honestly, I have a whole bunch of Westerly rulers. I also like, um, 
Angela Walters rulers, they're really great. I also like Amanda, you know who I'm talking, Amanda Murphy's rulers. Hers are really great. And I also have some baby lock rulers. They are just all, I just have, I had to sell off all of my high shank rulers and I have to get for myself a whole bunch of the uh, long arm thickness rulers because of that baby over there. But luckily the Bernina, the, the, the ruler foot, the 72 Bernina ruler foot works on long arm thickness rulers. So I am able to use my long arm thickness rulers with the Bernina and also with that long arm over there. But it's a sit down long arm you see, not the kind on the frame. Okay, Sharon asks, okay, wait. So Kay Moreland asked, what is your stitch length? My stitch length is, it still says 2.5 on here, but since I lowered my feed dogs, I am, the machine is not controlling the stitch length, I am controlling the stitch length. Now for some machines, your instructions will tell you to move your stitch length to zero. Uh, please look in your sewing machine's manual because I can't tell you how your machine does free motion. On this, the feed dogs drop. On my Juki, the feed dogs drop. And on my Janome, also, the feed dogs drop. So at that point, it really doesn't matter what the stitch length on my sewing machine says because the stitch length is just telling you how much the feed dogs are moving with every stitch. With the long stitch length, the food the feed dogs are moving the fabric a lot. With a short, short stitch length, the feed dogs are just moving the fabric a tiny bit. But when the feed dogs are down, it really doesn't matter what that number is because they're not moving the fabric at all. You're moving the fabric. So look in your sewing machine manual. If the feed dogs drop, then probably like this, it really doesn't matter what the stitch length number is. If it tells you don't your feed dogs won't drop, you need to put them to zero, then do that. If it tells you put a cover over your feed dogs so that your fabric will just slide on top. Then also, I don't think it matters what the number is because they're covered. But different machines work differently. So I can only answer this question if you have a Bernina B770. No. Or I can try and answer it if you have a Juki, but my Juki drops the feed dogs and so it doesn't matter what the stitch length is. And my Janome, um, it's a, 14,000. That one also drops the feed dogs, but that one knows that I've dropped the feed dogs, and so it knows it's free motion stitching them. Okay, so Sharon Hancock says, I don't have a quilting ruler. Is there anything else I can use in a pinch until I can buy one? Nope. Nope. Just do it like I did without a quilting ruler. Um, if you try and use a thin cutting ruler, you could break your machine. So I don't want to be, I want to tell anyone to do that. Um, you know, just um, and, and don't try to use the quilting ruler if you don't have the foot. So if you don't have both the ruler, the special ruler that's thick and the foot, just do it the way I showed you, just regular free motion. Okay, let's see here. It seems that you don't swill and swing your quilt around. How can you sew left and right? Um, it's because the feed dogs are down and I am moving the quilt, not the sewing machine. So I am, completely in charge of which direction I move the quilt, left, right, up, down, and I'm only paying attention to where I'm going. If I can see where I'm going, then I don't need to turn the quilt. If I can't see where I'm going, then I turn and adjust the quilt a little bit so I can't see where I'm going. Let's see here. Do you know if there's a walking foot made for a featherweight? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you'd have to Google that. Um, or a ruler foot. So you could do this, since this design is these straight lines, you could do this with a walking foot, but you would have to turn the quilt like 20 times. So I don't recommend it. I recommend doing this with free motion quilting or with free motion ruler foot quilting. All right, have you ever used an acrylic clear ruler foot? Um, I've never heard of that. They don't make one for my sewing machine, but if they do for yours and your sewing machine company endorses it, then it would probably work. Okay, but I've never heard of it, so I don't even know if there is one. Let me see if there are any more questions. All right, I don't see any. I hope that I showed you how easy and fun this block is and that you give it a try if you are trying it. 
I would love it if you showed me on Instagram and show me how it's going. Um, I am just having so much fun quilting with you. Also, if you, um, if there's a block design that you want to try and you think we should include in our quilt, please put a comment below telling me what block design. I was thinking maybe for next time to do like a feather in a square. A feather in a square is something that I have tried before and I think it's really pretty. And honestly, to me, it's a little bit easier than like a big feather where you have to like decide the edges and the shape of the feather. Whereas a feather in a square like this, like you, you're fitting it in the confines of this square. And to me, that's a little bit easier because you know where the boundaries of the feather are supposed to go, if that makes any sense. So, um, feather in the square, is that what we should do next? Or should we try, we haven't done any like all over fill designs to fill up the square with an all over fill design. So we could maybe try that. So anyway, tell me in the comments what kind of a design you wanna do next. And I will try and figure something out. And in the meantime, I hope that you like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the ideas and things we do. So anyway, have a wonderful weekend. And I'll join you next Friday for our next quilt. For our next quilt design. All right, see ya.